guys, Alyssa Melnick over here. So, I want to share with you all a little bit about my last research project in my English 102 class. Um, the premise of this project was simple. We had to write a traditional academic research paper um, using five or more scholarly sources. This paper also had to be a persuasive paper. So, all of my sources I found through the University of Tennessee Library website, the databases. Um, and the topic had to be somehow related to folk folklore or folk knowledge or wisdom. And so, of course, I had to take Appalachian music. My first question was, what constitutes Appalachia? And I came to find out that there's not one distinct definition because there's constant shifts in the Appalachian border. And so most tend to agree that Appalachia consists of Kentucky, um, Tennessee, Georgia, West Virginia, Virginia, South and North Carolina, as well as Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Alabama. Then I really wanted to look at the history of this music. And so what I found most interesting is that a lot of the early musicologists and anthropologists that studied this music um, only looked for the Anglo-Saxon origins and roots. Um, and I think a lot of that can be attributed to racism at the time. But if one were to truly look at Appalachian music, it is evident that this music has outside influences, that it's not just a traditional ballad singing. Um, this music has rhythm and beat. And I think a lot of that, according to my research anyway, is, um, can be attributed to African-American influences. Because of the geography of this region, um, there really wasn't any plantation and farming. And so because of that, a lot of free slaves fled to this region. And slowly, we begin to see the African Americans and the whites began to interact. And through these interactions, they started to share each other's culture. Um, the European Americans picked up the African American banjo, while the African Americans picked up the European fiddle. And so they began to play these instruments together, and this new, rich, peculiar genre of music was born. However, not only instruments helped to influence this music, um, blues and jazz also um, gave that twist to the ballad singing. Gender also plays a major role in Appalachian music. The ballad singing is usually always accredited to women, while bluegrass instrumental music is most often accredited to men. So ultimately, I wanted to find out how Appalachian music has influenced modern day pop culture. And it turns out that as early as the 1920s, country music radio stations have been growing in popularity. Uh, all of the South, pretty much, is very interested in country music. Um, this music has spread to Midwest, um, like I said, all of the South, Texas, o Oklahoma region. Um, New England and the Mid-Atlantic states are still a little bit resistant, but it is charted that this music is going to continue to grow. All in all, this project is extremely interesting, and I do believe that this music must be preserved for future generations to hear.